It's been a tough several days on the homestead, but there's also been some blessings and life goes on. So let's get these sheep and goats moved to their new area. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Renewed Homestead. Ben and Denise here, and we're going to tell you about kind of a tough season that we're having here. Um, you know, it's just been, you know, between the pests and things going on. Um, let's start out with the baby duck that we found that got pecked. Uh, she only, she, he only lived about three days and, and passed, so disappointing, but maybe that's why mama kicked him out. We don't know. Or but, if she got kicked out, we we're but, not sure what but, happened. But she got to be in with her other little friends for a few, had a few good days and then she's gone. And then we, uh, we decided to go ahead and integrate our, the turkeys that we had hatched. That uh, were bigger. And, yeah. They're, uh, they're, they're, they're bigger. They're a good size. You know, there were two of male and female. The male was probably a little bit bigger than the chickens. Well, the way we integrate is when they all go to bed at night and they're all in their, their perches in there. We, add the birds in there. They all wake up together. And so far that's been very successful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, we wait till the chickens are bigger, of course. Well, right, right. Yeah, we don't put the little ones in because they, they do get picked on. But um, well, the male turkey who came down the next morning was dead. Wasn't pecked, just laying there dead. And I'm kind of suspicious that, uh, now there is no evidence here. We think that big turkey killed him. Just another male turkey, a male. and that's that's what they do. So uh, Denise didn't know, but I have now named this turkey OJ. <laughs> there's no evidence, but there's been a murder. No, oh, I think there was evidence. There was a lot of murder, a lot of a lot of evidence. <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of murder. But the glove didn't fit. Yes. Some of you wouldn't wouldn't understand that. Those of you who do, but yeah, so we don't <laughs> know for sure, but. It's the only thing that makes sense to us because they were healthy, and that was a really tough lesson learned. That, that was, and that was we, we thought that was bad. And then the next day, next yeah. day or the next uh, Sunday anyway, Sunday morning, we got back from church. Went had, in to go, went in to eat lunch. Yep, had some lunch. Our dogs had been, were running in and out of the, the door. Yep, dogs were out. The So we had allowed the chickens to roam a little bit because yeah. the dogs were out. Right, you know, we've got the fence that they, that protects them at night, but during the day we let them free range, eat the bugs and, you know, the chickenness of the chicken and the best day, best life that they can have. Well, 
A lot of them lost their lives that day because while we were in there, we heard the guineas start doing their sirens screaming and we ran out and, you know, Denise was out the door ahead of me and she saw a fox running off. I saw, all I saw was the bushy tail as it disappeared up into the woods. Well, that's when we started walking around and we had dead birds everywhere. everywhere. Well, and the crazy thing is the dogs were out. Yeah. So he did this while our dogs were out. Yep. And he didn't eat the chickens. Nope. And that's and, and that's the crazy thing. He massacred them. We lost eleven chickens and a duck. Yep. And he they he just killed them and then left them. And normally foxes will grab their prey and run off because they don't yep. want to get caught. So we don't know what is going on. I know a lot of people have asked if it was rabid. I don't know. He didn't, um, he didn't stop to tell us how he was feeling. Well, he didn't look like when I ran out, he did run off. So I, you know, typically they're a little crazy. Well, they are crazy when they're rabid. I didn't see any other signs of um, yeah. rabies or anything, but this is a absolutely out of character. Yeah. So, but, we, but it seemed like he was just killing for pleasure because he was just, there were bodies all, you know, down by the pond, over by the creek, up on the little road here, just. It was yeah, awful. We think awful. we think we don't think he actually killed the duck. We think she uh, was scared to death because she was no no injuries, no puncture wounds, nothing yeah, like that. She was just laying, laying next to the pond. So yeah, so it was just it was really out of character and just weird things have been happening. It's like I, I walk every morning. I take a forty minute walk, um, and I was walking a few weeks ago and. A deer, yeah, you know, I saw a deer, it was probably 100 feet from me, stomped its foot, no big deal, they do that. Yeah, all the time. And I went around this curve, and all of a sudden I look back, and the deer's following me. It's literally stalking me, and it did it for a, a while. And I remember thinking, this is weird. Like, normally deer, I mean, they, they run. Every time I see them, they run. And, you know, and you all know, it's just, it's been a tough year. You know, the, the pest issues in the garden, the deer have eaten all our tomatoes. They ate a good portion of our corn. Our neighbor's potato um, harvest got completely decimated because of the deer. Their, our corn, another neighbor had their corn completely decimated. So it's, it's just been a really off year and our dogs are fighting. Loki and Decca are fighting. Yeah. We don't yeah. know what's going on. Yeah. All right, so yeah, Loki and Loki and Decker have been kind of at each other, so we've had to keep them separated in the house. They seem okay outside, but it's just it's been weird. But um, yeah, there's you know, there's just going to be difficult days and uh, difficult you know, years, difficult years, difficult seasons. You know, it's we it can be discouraging, and that's part of the reason we why we wanted to talk to you. We want to encourage you because you know every every mistake, every failure. You know, as long as you're learning from it, it's not a failure. As my, my, my dad or my grandma, the two of them would say, you know, if it, it's not a failure if you're learning from it. So we try to learn from everything. You know, we've, you know, learned that I need to be a better shot at, at the fox. Um, well, and we're, <laughs> yeah, and we're going things. to get an LGD. So we were going to get LGDs once we got the cows, but we're going to go ahead and put that in motion sooner. So we will have one down here with the chickens. We'll have one up there. Um, with the goats and the sheep and eventually like we've talked about we're going to move the the chickens up by the sheep you know in a, in a chicken tractor but um, yep. just haven't had time to do that yet but you know we lost every single one of our beal filter chickens except for the rooster and y'all know we were trying to transition to that so yep. it thing it, this season's been tough it's been a really tough season um, and we know that it's been a really tough season for y'all I know we spoke with Cindy and she's had a ton of predators around um and we just wanted to encourage you that th there are going to be some years that are just off years, that things are just not going to go right. And then you're going to have other years that are going to be amazing and everything's going to come together. Um, and, you know, and, you know, God provides a way. He always does. Yeah. You know, well, we lost all those chickens right, and a well, friend came through. Yeah. That's, you know, that's, and out of, you know, bad situations, there, there's blessings in those and, and. Sometimes you need to be that blessing. We, uh, you know, our friend Jeff, who is a, who's the brother-in-law um, of our friend and neighbor Travis, who I bought my box blade from, well, found out they had kittens. That's where our kittens came from. And when we went out to see the kittens, we talked to them and they had goats and they decided that they were going to downsize their goat herd and, you know, got a hold of us and said, hey, you know, are you in still interested in goats? And so... We went down and got the goats, and that's where uh, Cogburn. Cogburn went. You know, he's got his harem out there, and you know, he's 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 doing okay out there. Yeah, <laughs> he recognized this, which was kind of cool. He came out, but anyway, um, so we 
we got a hold of Jeff and said, hey, you know, we, we lost all our chickens. Are you still transitioning over to Bard Rock chickens? He's like, yeah, come on down. You know, we'll get you, get you set because he had a lot of, of chickens that weren't Bard Rock. And we got there. He loaded us up with, with eight laying hens. And he's like, no, no, take them. You know, he wouldn't, he wouldn't accept any money from us. And, you know, just, just a real blessing because, you know, we've started making our own dog food. Well, eggs are a big ingredient in, in what we're feeding them. So, you know, we lost all, all but two or three laying hens. And even they, they were, you know, kind of every other day at this point. But anyway, but, you know, that was a blessing to us. And like I said, you know, sometimes, oftentimes you're not able to pay back somebody's kindness. So you pay it forward. Mom is not moving out. Um, just a lot of different aspects of it. We're disappointed, but you know, we were looking forward to having her here, but that's, um, I want her to be happy. That's the main thing. As long as she's happy, that's mm -hmm. all I care about. Well, when we thought she was coming out, we planted a second potato garden and that's just about ready to harvest. Well, you know, we just harvested, what was it? A wheelbarrow and two five gallon buckets? <laughs> yes. <laughs> just messing. Anyway. But we got a hold of our neighbors and said, hey, listen, you know, we know you got three young boys. We've got all these potatoes. We know the deer absolutely decimated yours. You have no potatoes. As soon as they're, they're ready, we'll, we'll bring them on down for you. So, you know, we're, we're paying it forward. And um, that's sometimes that's the best you can do, you know, just help others. And, and, you know, somewhere along the line, somebody will help you and just keep paying it forward. And we just want to encourage you. Don't don't be discouraged. You know, there's bad days, weeks, months, seasons, years, but yeah. we'll get through it. And just, you know, we're, we always pray for all of you and we hope that your prayers are, are sent our way. You know, it's always, always good to watch out for each other and, and the country and the world. It's a lot of, a lot of ugly going on right now, but. Uh, yeah, but God provides y'all. Yep. God does provide. And just, we know there's a lot of you that are starting homesteading and you're like, oh my gosh, what did I get into? <laughs> Um, you know, it, it, like I said, some years are going to be great. Some years might be more difficult, but keep going. It is worth it. And you learn every failure on the homestead. You have a chance to learn from it. And as long as you're learning from it, things will get better. Yep. So, okay. yeah. So we, you know, so wanted to give you an update on what was going on in the homestead, but also just kind of remind you that there's, you know, you see a lot of things on YouTube and on video that look like everything's perfect, Right. And, yeah. you know, you see all this idyllic videos, like, look at the life we're living. It's perfect. And it, it's never perfect. There's always challenges. Whether you're homesteading or not, there's always challenges. Um, so please don't get discouraged. We all have these challenges. We all have failures. We all make mistakes. Um, you know, we're doing our best. But, you know, yep. unfortunately, sometimes things happen. And it's just been a tough it's been a tough season and we'll make adjustments next year so that hopefully we don't have as tough of a season next year, but God provides. He yeah. always does. Yeah. Yeah, you just never know. I mean, last year we had oodles of tomatoes and this year we don't have tomatoes. And that, the deer that was the other all. thing. Jeff, <laughs> Jeff also sent us home with a bunch of tomatoes. He's like, I've harvested, we've canned, we've done everything we want with these. Take what you want. So, we, And as you know, the you know deer got to all of our tomato plants. Yeah. So yeah. There's, they're, they're still alive and, and struggling there's some flowers but we've not, we have not harvested any tomatoes and by this time last year we were oh, unfortunately yeah. throwing away buckets full just well, throwing them the out to the birds yes, yeah but, well we didn't have the kitchen though to well that either but, jar everything but yeah. yeah but just you know i hope you're doing well and, <laughs> and, and you know just remember we all make mistakes we all mess up and uh you know we're we're, we're doing our best to learn from them keep moving forward yep so, so, but, uh, all right, well, hope you're doing well. And, yeah. uh, again, we're praying for you and, uh, you know, yeah. and we do have, uh, still have baby ducks. If you're in the Western North Carolina area and need some baby ducks, they're adorable. Yes. Oh, yeah. and we are putting together. Uh, do you want to announce that yet? Yes. Well, yeah. I just want to give them a teaser. I guess we can give them a teaser. Give them a teaser. About a special event. Yes. So we are looking mm. to put together a homestead slash prepper event. Um, looking at October 22nd um, at Madison Fairgrounds in Madison uh, County, North Carolina. Um, and, you know, we've gone to homesteading events and they're great, but there seems to be a lack of actual like hands-on education and the preparedness aspect of it. So we want to kind of bring homesteading and preparedness together because as Zach at an American Homestead says it best, if you follow prepping to its logical conclusion, you wind up on a homestead. Yep. Uh, we've got some really special guests that have already uh, committed to be there. Um, so we'll keep you all posted as this goes. We're looking for... Um, 
sponsors obviously to help us pay for this we will have vendor spots but we really want this to be an educational experience so um, if those of you out there um, you know if you really want to teach on prepping or you know preparedness or on homesteading um, please reach out to us we need more teachers yep. um, you know we're not going to tell you what to teach you know we just want you to keep it within homestead or preparedness yep. and uh, yes. you know give you you know yeah, there's there's a lot of you out there that have skills you don't even realize you don't realize how much those skills are needed by other people. I mean, we've got folks that, you know, they growing up, they, they can't, they went to the kitchen and they, they canned tomatoes or whatever it is, or made apple butter and, and jarred up all, all their food and preserved that. But that's just what they did. They grew up doing that with mom and grandma and it's just second nature to them. And it's like, oh, that's no big deal. Well, yeah, it's somebody new. It's never canned. I mean, until until Denise Nett met me, she'd never canned anything. No, I she hadn't. Had, he taught me. Yeah. So, I mean, just something like that. But mm -hmm. if, if you've got some skills out there, woodworking or metalwork or whatever, but yeah, just reach out. I'm happy to have a conversation with you and see what, what, uh, what we can work out. And yep, absolutely. We're, we're excited about it. We are really excited. I, I, yep. did, I did go to a prepper fest in Phoenix years yeah. ago, and, and it was it was at the height of uh, The Walking Dead, and so uh, you had yes. everybody out there with their crossbows and... You know, people are showing up and with the with the the, yeah, we, paint, the we, war paint on, we, and we want to be realistic, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, and like I said, we'll have vendor spots to help us pay for it, but we really want to focus on the educational aspect yeah. of this. So, if you like to a vendor spot, um, if you like to teach, um, you know, please, please, please let us know. Um, but yeah, we we really want this to be a great event for for everybody and. Yeah. Like I said, focus on the preparedness as well as the homesteading aspect, and kind of combine those two. And for kids too, for the fa for the family, because the, the kids, if the kids are excited about it, it definitely makes things easier as a parent to, you know, hey, let's let's go do this. If the kids are ready to go, then yeah, that's always helpful. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So. Otherwise, it's just a chore to them. Yeah, but we'll uh, we'll keep y'all posted with more details. But remember, October twenty yeah. second, Madison County Fairgrounds, Madison yep. County, North Carolina. Yep. There you go. So. All right. Well. Um, we hope you are well, uh, you know, make sure you're being good to yourself. Take, take a moment, breathe, relax. Um, we'll all get through this together with a lot of prayer. Yes. So, all right. Well, take care of yourselves, everybody. Make sure you get those pet spayed neutered, of course. <laughs> and if you can't adopt one, there's, the shelters are full. So, okay. Well, you good? Good. I'm good. All right. Take care, everybody. God bless. We'll see you on the next video. Bye, y'all. Bye.